be trying to do two things here. I'm going to be trying to record um, over here where you see the sunset, the Raspberry Pi screen, and then you're going to see the space screen, which is actually my MacBook. And what we're going to be doing is showing you how you can actually use a terminal, SSH, or IP address, and um, basically use the secure shell network to be able to code and operate your Raspberry Pi without being tethered and connected to a monitor like we see here. This is gonna be important when we get to physical computing or you start to put your Raspberry Pi, say, on a robot or some other type of robotic mechanism like operating your fish tank or things like that. You don't always wanna be connected uh, hardwired to a wall outlet and or a monitor. So the first couple of things we're gonna do, when you get your Raspberry Pi up and running, one of the first things we gotta do is we're gonna go up here, I know it's a little hard to see on the screen, we're gonna click this Raspberry Raspberry, and we're going to go to preferences first. Um, and when we drop down to preferences, you're going to see lots of different options. And what we want to do is click on Raspberry Pi configuration. This is going to pull up this screen here. And what you're going to see on this screen is a bunch of different options, things that we'll maybe come back to over time in future projects. But we're going to click over here to interfaces, and these are all the things that can interface and interact with your Raspberry Pi. And we're not going to turn all these on now. Um, some of these might look at and not even realize what they are, and that's okay. But what we're going to do um, for this particular one, you probably have a screen. It defaults to disabled the SAs. SSH, which is your secure shell. This allows you to remotely control or access another device using your Wi-Fi or your LAN. And so we want to turn this on. We want to allow uh, a network encryption key to go from my Mac MacBook to the Raspberry Pi. So then that way I can record, or not record, excuse me, I can write code and access the terminal of my Raspberry Pi through my MacBook, uh, which is going to be very helpful in some of these future projects. So I'm going to go ahead and enable that. I'm going to click OK. All right. Now, a couple other things that we want to do here with the Raspberry Pi. Uh, we go up here. We want to click this terminal. Um, and actually, let me zoom out here so you can see what I'm talking about. In the upper left there, you see this old school terminal icon. Now, if you had a computer way back in the day, I'm getting old here, you had the MS-DOS prompt, which that's how you had to execute your games and everything else in the big floppy disk and drives. Uh, we don't see this anymore because we have a GUI, a graphical user interface, your desktop, the icons, the pictures on your phones, their, their touch screens, or the apps. That's what we see. But behind all that is a terminal, text-based, coding text-based communication. And so what we're gonna see here is this is how we can communicate. And while we don't need to do this for everything, it's just important to be aware of what this can do. And so just to get you started, we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this, but things that you can do within the terminal is we could type in ls, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna give us a list of everything in the current directory that we're in. And so as you're looking at here, you're gonna see here in the blue, desktop, downloads, music, public, videos, Documents, Magpie, pictures, and templates. These are all the folders that we have access to. And so if I were to open up my document folder, these are all the exact same things right here. And so then I could actually, through text line, I could communicate these. Where what we normally are used to is we open up this folder, you know, maybe then I click here to documents, and that's how I access files. But we can do the same process through text base. So LS is just going to give us just a simple list of whatever directory we are. Now what we want to do here is just so you can see how this works is we can use a command called change directory so i could type in here cd for change directory and then what i can do is i can add in any directory i want so all these items here are different directories so if i wanted to i could go here i don't have any on this particular raspberry pi but i could go cd documents and what you're going to see then is see how it's labeled documents right here. So now I could search, I could queue up a folder or an, I, an application, a document from within here, and now I'm in the document folder. This is the same approach as if I were to go here in the GUI here, and I were to click documents, same kind of structure. It just, here's the text-based version, here's the, the visual version of this as we go through. And so just something for you to be aware of. We're not going to spend forever on it, but we are going to use this terminal um, to do some work here as we get started. So what we want to do is the whole point of this video, right? We want to be able to control and access our Raspberry Pi 
through another device. And so the way we do that is first we have to know the IP address of a Raspberry Pi. And if you don't know a lot about IP addresses, it's just an internet protocol. Every single device that's to your network has a, think of it as a digital mailbox. When the postman delivers mail to your inbox, to your mailbox, all right, you have an address, your home address. Similar type of concept. Every single device has to have an address so that information can travel to it. When you send an email, you're sending to an IP address and it, it's not gonna send it randomly to just some stranger. It's going to go and look for that particular address and deliver it. So this is what we wanna to do to be able to create this, this network terminal, this communication. And so we're coming back here to the terminal just like we were working on. Um, so we need to be able to find out what the IP address is. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to type in just a real simple command, all right, if config, and it's going to give you a whole bunch of information. Don't be overwhelmed by this, okay? Don't be overwhelmed. If you're using Wi-Fi, which I am, I have the connected to my network, I'm going to go down here to this WLAN, right? And I can see here my IP address. It's right there. That's what I want to be able to to use in this particular one um, while we're going through that, okay? Now, let's connect my MacBook to the Raspberry Pi now that we know this information. If you have Windows and you're using a Windows or a desktop PC, you're going to need to download some software to use SSH, the secure shell. Uh, the one that most recommend is, is Putty. I'll put a link in the show notes. Um, I don't have any Windows desktops for this particular video. I'm using a Mac, and my Mac actually has a terminal already built in. And so if you're using Windows, you're just gonna have to load in um, the putty command in, to be able to, to do this work, and you can just follow those instructions as you go. It's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. For the Okay, so now, we're going to go to our terminal uh, here on the Mac now, okay? I'm going to queue this up. And now that we know the IP address, we're going to go ahead and open up the secure shell. So SSH, a space, and then PI, and then at, and then the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to type in 192.168.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
for print hello world. All right, we're just going to tell it that when we run it, it's going to print hello world. Just like so. We see that it's in green. That lets us know that's the text that it's going to display. All right, so I'm going to use control X to X out of this. I'm going to save it. Yes. All right. And we should have it here in just a minute over here on the folder. Let's see. Maybe I have to come back here. Let me get out of this here for a minute. Make sure we're still connected. Let's see, robot. All right. And now there it is. Okay. So now we can go ahead and we could run this particular program. And so you can see here on the Mac that I'm queued up on my, pa my Raspberry Pi. I'm in my robot directory. And now if I just queue up that, that code, that document, I'm going to read it in Python 3. Hello world. Dot pi. Okay. It's going to run this program. And it should say, hello world. Let's find out. Boom. And you can see here on the Mac the hello world icon. It's right here. This is what I did. It printed it here in the terminal. So I'm controlling the Raspberry Pi. It's printing it here on my terminal on the Mac. That's what I'm controlling it with. Okay. But over here you can see that the code itself is actually on my Raspberry Pi. This code is not on my MacBook. How incredible is that? So this is what's going to be helpful. This is going to allow us to execute files, all right, from our Mac to a Raspberry Pi when we're not tethered to a monitor. And this is incredible. So what I want to see from you is show me how you can do it. Give me a sample thing of what you're going. If you're already advanced, I'd love to share, leave a comment of how you're using the Elliott, the, F, the SSH, the secure shell over your local area network to write code. What are the ways in which you're using it? Super fascinating. And if you're brand new to this, just simply see if you can do this very simple code here to make it work. All right, my friends, stay awesome.